Well, hello, everyone. Salutations. My name is Riley Arlick, and I'm the DM of these people. Um, <laughs> people. <laughs> Why the <is this>? side? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're about to play some Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just want to ask, uh, first of all, our, our players, how's everyone doing? Good. You're very good. I'm very excited. Yeah, and scared. Very important. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> A little bit, a little bit of of session one anxiety today. Yes. Oh yeah. yeah. Gr just good. waiting for you to wipe us with a dragon right off the bat. Rocks fall, everyone oh, dies. That's oh good. my god. No. <laughs> <laughs> Jokes on you. The campaign begins in the afterlife. Yeah. Yeah. Surprise! <laughs> Let me pull out the real campaign. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> I have I have pulled that on players, and they really didn't appreciate it. So uh. no, I don't think we'll be doing. There's any, the twist. Anything it's so an drastic. isakai. It's <laughs> yeah, it's an isakai. You guys uh, awaken in a strange town called Washington D.C. Allow me to move our little page over here. <laughs> and I shall paint you a picture. Ooh. Welcome to Arcala, the fortress city of the south, whose walls have stood for over a millennia, whose barriers have provided safe haven for thousands and for years. Four years? <laughs> for, for thousands of people and four years of time. Okay. <laughs> Come on, catch up, catch up. F-O-R. Yes, yes, yes. <clears throat> Governed by an aristocracy and maintained by its people its various structures reach ever skyward. The only rival in the nearby vicinity, the distant mountains and the walls themselves. Shadows loom heavy in the morning and in the evening. And oil lit lanterns burn for most of the day and night. Skeletal guards patrol the streets, keeping the peace with their keepers and tenders. The smell of manure can often be caught on the air if the wind blows from the north, catching the scents of the farmlands that exist within the walls. If the wind blows from the south, you can catch a little bit of salt in the air, as well as the scent of brick and stone and well-toiled natural earth. Trees rustle around the city, some of them as tall as the building, some of them much shorter, providing shade from the noon sun that beats down hard in this region. And the roads <laughs> constantly bustle with people entering and exiting the various businesses on the ground floors and their apartments and homes in the floors above. Lords and, for lack of a better term, superintendents govern the various squares and areas of Arcala, acting as miniature mayors, maintaining their lands, even though they do not necessarily own them, and making sure that any squabbles between the tightly packed populace are kept well under control. Our heroes not yet aware that fate has chosen them, find themselves, for one reason or, or another, in the Axe and Boot Tavern. And if you all would please take your little character sheet, click and drag the name, and you can position yourself in the tavern itself. This is a portion of the tavern with oh hallways that lead out to a large ballroom that also doubles as a town hall. Oh, yeah. The noontime post lunch rush is here. <laughs> post lunch rush. The people that wish to eat quietly in the din of of uh, of the afternoon. There are a couple of dwarves conversing with an orc, an elderly man sitting by a 
smoldering fire. Iphany, the waitress, is tending to the tables, wiping them down, while uh, a tiefling and dragonborn converse with the bartender. The talk on the tongues Whoa. of those... Oh my. Hold alt, by the way, to not snap to the grid, yes. The talk of the tongue on those in the tavern is that of a recent monster attack. A great ram took offense to the walls and decided to sharpen its horns against the otherwise impenetrable edifice. The rumbling hammers sounding about every quarter hour created earth -like, earthquake-like tremors that vibrated the town and terrified its populace to their core. Only by careful coordination of the local guard, including the undead guard of the walls, was the ram convinced to leave, not even slain by the <laughs> ballista that were aimed at its head or the cannons that sounded off every couple of moments, adding to the cacophony of the destruction being wrought outside. Thankfully, that was several days ago, and the town has settled into a relatively quiet, sort of uplifted mood. There's an anxiety in the air. What if the ram returns? What if it continues to damage the walls outside of the farmlands? What if those walls that have stood for thousands of years should fail? But each day that goes past, the anxiety lessens and the people return to their normal lives. And so it is here that Warren, the Wendigo Paladin, Adrey, the human wizard, Urist, the beautiful dwarf bard, Clum, the goblin druid, and Genquinal, the Herengon fighter, find themselves as they eat a meal or converse with their table mate or simply listen in on the conversations at the other tables. They find themselves deep within fate's grasp. All right. Well, Warren uh, just uh, just got back from you know his temple run. Uh, you know he 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 went and hit up the 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 temple of the goddess of love and the goddess of like wheat and like the god of you know you know merriment and whatnot. And he was you know got his weekly uh, holy symbol. Uh, unfortunately, he, uh, you know, his prayers were unanswered, and, uh, you know, after running around, you know, doing, doing some odd jobs here and there, you know, everyone's talking about the ram, right? It's like, oh, we need, we need wood, or I need some, you know, supply, what if it breaks through? And so Warren's been running around, you know, lifting, uh, <laughs> doing a lot of heavy lifting, a lot of movement of goods from place to, from temple to temple, as they prepare for the worst, uh, and hope for the best, um, it's kind of kind of downtrodden uh, as he is, uh, you know, still not been graced with any uh, divine powers. Um, so he's, uh, you know, retired into the axe and boot uh, and is just constantly going, you know, if he's bringing him drinks and everything. And he's <laughs> he's just sitting there like, no, I just don't understand. I, I, I pray and I tea that I, you know do all these tasks for the acolytes of these gods and goddesses and they just don't respond am i doing something wrong surely surely i've got the armor i've got the weapons i've got the i've got the determination and just still nothing oh, one of these days i i need a, i need a trial i need a way to prove myself but i you know maybe maybe but i can't take on the ram by myself uh, maybe this is a sign uh, if only i could uh uh, somehow drive it off. Maybe then the gods and goddesses would answer my prayers. He's just kind of Tiffany, blaring on. <laughs> uh, having heard this kind of rant before, kind of nods along as she, you know, shoves rolls uh, her eyes. Uh, another drink in your hand. Uh, rolls her eyes. The fire ganasi, uh, you know, uh, a beautiful woman with uh, hair that that seems 
at the same time to be uh, alive with fire while, you know, catching the right light um, uh, with her kind of orangish skin and, and her affinity for uh, for a, a red and, and orange ensemble that uh, with an apron over that that suits her waitress duties just fine. Well, <clears throat> Adre is sitting sort of hunched over the table as he eats and speaks with Horst. Uh, gnarled fingers pulling apart uh, a chicken on his plate as he talks and munches. You know, these doesn't matter uh, how many of the beasts attack the walls. The guards can't and won't do anything about it. And it just continues on with that sort of annoyed Alex, old man. To, uh, to jump into that conversation, how would Urist respond? Urist is, uh, is sitting there having finished up her bit of sup and having gotten into her cups instead. And she clamp, uh, clamps a cup on, a ca on the table a couple of times with, with a hollow thunk thunk. And pre uh, proceeds to say, Right, Char? So long as that, uh, as that one arrogant git keeps at it, that's going to be the way it is. Uh, yeah, you're right. As long as he keeps calling shots. In that book once already. And let's see about that. Just has a whole page dedicated to him. <laughs> Is there any way we can put him in twice? <laughs> put him in twice. <laughs> if he does something further, there's not, not the, no reason we can't have multiple grudges against him. <laughs> multiple grudges? This is a new achievement oh, right there. No. Adre just sort of motions in, in in the direction of where his inn used to stand outside the walls. <laughs> okay, so um Kloom, you know, being a little short goblin, she has very like light green skin and the armor she wears is kind of just like your standard leather armor, but she's been wearing it for quite some time because she's never really lived in a city so it has like rips and a couple of tears here and there the chest piece she has to keep uh together with a rope because she's had it for so long she does wash it but you know that's the only clothes she has really so um she's sitting by uh what she considers her only friend in the city <laughs> uh quinn and while she's sitting, she's just silently sitting there, letting, uh, letting him eat his food, while she just actually plays the lyre. And but while she's playing, uh, her fingers very delicately and slowly, uh, stroking the strings, she's constantly looking around in a frantic panic, just out of fear that someone's just gonna come out of nowhere and attack her. She doesn't really say anything. But her eyes pretty much just say, Oh god, is, is anyone going to come towards us? Well, Quinn is sitting back in his chair, rather relaxed, really, compared to the anxiety-filled air <laughs> that's been hanging over the city these last few days. He's picking at some food. He's, uh... <laughs> uh... I guess par for the course for being a rabbit. He is a vegetarian. <laughs> um, so he's he's got a plate of things he's eating and picking at he's not really looking at Klum he's more looking around the tavern just really out of mild bored curiosity and he hears Klum plucking away at her lyre kind of glances over at her sees how panicked she looks you should relax oh, says. Oh, well, well I mean why do you think I play this? It's the only thing that really relaxes me. You think the ram is going to burst through the wall at any second? It's not even the ram. It's just she, like, looks behind her chair, looks over. She looks in the direction of Warren, Audrey. Like, she doesn't look at them exactly because she has no clue who they are. But she just, like, looks around looking at all the people. And she says, there's just so many people. Why did you want to eat here today? It's one of my favorite taverns. Well, <sighs> do what you must. Well, if you keep acting like that, you will attract the guards. 
We already tracked them yesterday due to the little schemes you were pulling. Mm. He just munches on his food. <laughs> doesn't respond mm. to that. <laughs> so, uh, as you have your conversations and your meals, uh, you recount your tribulations and your trials, uh, Klum, um, you hear a, a, a sound. Immediately, she, like, stops playing and, like, just, like, her ears perk up. You hear a scratching sound. It seems a bit muted, um, but it seems to be coming from the center of the tavern. Uh, uh -oh. so, hearing the scratches, Plume immediately, like, looks towards the center of the tavern. And then looks back at Quinn and then just sinks into her chair. Okay. <laughs> Quinn just looks at her like, what? What? What are you doing? <laughs> what? Did, did you not just, just hear that? And you do hear the sound. Um, mm -hmm. And your ears perk up and you can tell that there is some sort of movement of earth. A scratching mm -hmm. of wood underneath the tavern. At this point, Klum's like, you, like, no one else can really hear, but Quinn just hears her teeth clattering together. <laughs> it's like, uh. Quinn just, he sits up a little straighter in his chair. Okay. But he, he's otherwise just kind of shrugging it off. He's like, mm, It's like, eh. Rat. You shrug it off, you sit up a little bit straighter, you return to your meal, your ears perhaps a little bit perked in the direction of the sound that you heard, and it gets a little bit louder and a little bit closer. This scratching, grinding sound now of stone and wood. <laughs> and at this point, I'd like Urist, Adre, and Warren to roll perception checks as well. Uh-oh. Adre, you start noticing the scratching and grinding, and Urist, you do as well. First picking up perhaps on Adre's, you know, perked up expression and then honing your own senses a, a moment later, you hear this scratching of wood and stone coming from under the floor of the tavern. The hell is that? The hell is what? You don't hear it? <laughs> Just checking. So has Urist heard it yet? You do hear it, yes. But, hmm. Urst slowly closes the book and raises out of her seat. That <laughs> doesn't sound good. Conversely, Adre picks up his book. <laughs> <laughs> and Warren is just like, and then they had me carry like, oh, it was like 16 pounds of wheat across town. It was so heavy. <laughs> <laughs> The only sound louder than the uh, than the scratching sound, and other people are starting to pick up on it as well. A little bit confused as to why this is coming from uh, from you know the, the center of the tavern. Even Ifany has started to like look down around you know the, the stair area. Perhaps um, Warren is Warren's voice is the only thing louder than that at this point. Doesn't even um, notice that everyone else is like, "What's going on?" Just yes. For the sake just for the sake of silliness, you mind if I toss insight to uh, re to read the room, so to speak? Or Absolutely, go for it. Ooh, a 22. Oh. Wow. That is our first uh, above 20 roll of the series. Ooh. Um, yeah. just so. It's not a natural 20, but still. Uh, so a Nice, tidy 18. I'm okay with that. You are looking around the room. You see the dwarves and the orc have stopped their conversation and are looking towards the that first set of stairs in the center of the tavern. You uh, can see that that Plume and Quinn, this this strange goblin and heron gone across the room, are alert. You see Ifany is alert, and you uh, you can't really see much beyond that, but you can tell that everyone's kind of uneasy. They're all looking in the same direction and waiting for something to happen. In that case, Erst, uh, Erst is going to capitalize on the opportunity with uh, with a good old persuasion roll. Okay. <laughs> 24. Okay. Jesus. Erst, uh, 
take, uh, takes their mug and taps it on the table with a, with a loud rap like a gavel. Okay. It says, back up towards the doors. Don't know what that is, but we don't want to see it. Okay. <laughs> uh, you have some people that uh, the, the dwarves immediately, you know, stand up out of their chairs, which makes them actually a little bit shorter than the chairs themselves, <laughs> uh, as well as the orc. Uh, who starts to move in that direction as well. The elderly man behind Urist uh, kind of wakes up from his nap uh, <laughs> and starts to oh uh, you know, sn snort and, and wonder what the, the sound is is all about. And the dwarf closest to the stairs is quickly starting to shuffle backwards uh, away from his table and his forgotten meal. Ifany uh, kind of shuffles to the other <laughs> side of, of Warren, kind of looking looking to get behind his bulk. Um, <laughs> or is looking around, just like taking a sip of his drink, just confused. <laughs> yes, and in that moment, as Warren sips his drink, there is an upheaval of the wood and an explosion of splinters and chaos. I've, I've just got this visual of of Urist yelling out their warning and Warren just perking up and waving back. <laughs> just, yes. Oh, we're about to sing the song. I do love the song. Axe Warren, boots and axe and boots. Need to make a dexterity check. Uh, uh oh. <laughs> oh <no. laughs> Warren, um, you feel the ground give under your chair and you stand up, perhaps picking up your, your mug in the same motion and shifting uh, out of your seat just in time to see the your chair fall back into a newly formed hole. Oh. <laughs> I wasn't prepared. Uh, there's some interesting time to do renovations. Yes, and in the same moment, a chittering is heard, a clacking of chitin and mandibles. And out from the holes burst forth Oh, monsters. Boy. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> These creatures skitter across the wood, crawling up out into the tavern appropriately, their many eyes blinking in the sudden oil light of the noontime uh, tavern and screeching in frustration and hunger. And it is here that I would like you all to roll for a <laughs> nice <laughs> note. <laughs> Oh, Warren's oh, like, but... this must be it! Finally! <laughs> Finally. A chance to prove myself! Uh, so, at the top of the order, Urist, who already was aware of something happening, followed by Warren, uh, then it will be Adre, and then Klum, and finally, Jen Quinal. Oh, so, Urist, these creatures you know burst the from the ground, skittering over the wood and screeching in hunger. What do you do? All right. Well, Urst is not about to have any of this. This is this is all just not not something that Urst is even willing to consider. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so she busts open her book and starts writing. Destroying <laughs> one tavern. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh God! Mm -hmm. Mark that uh, off the bucket list. <laughs> She is going to rush right on up. At, um, as she moves, uh, she reaches for her belt and whips out her trusty rapier, mm -hmm. uh, a, a, a weapon of uh, a weapon of elegant rather than ceremonial combat. And as she approaches, she calls out at the nearest creature. Oi, yes. you chunk of chitin and bone and blood! Come over here and let me see what's inside you. <laughs> 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 The creature owes us a DC 12 wisdom save or take one psychic damage <laughs> and suffer disadvantage on its next attack. Okay, all right. So they all have to right. make a wisdom save? Correct. <laughs> Yoink. Oh, it fails. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it fails. Uh, okay. Let me, I would, uh, change I would say, rolls. yeah, I would say the black dice. No one can see the number. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That that was, was intentional a bit ago, but not not so necessary now. I've changed it. I've changed it. Uh, but it rolled a three. <laughs> yeah, three total. Three total. It rolled a two actually. Uh, so it has disadvantage. Okay. It has and takes one psychic damage. Yes, got it. Not exactly a big roll, but you know, first uh, third level. We'll, we'll we'll work on that. Oh, okay. Now, and because we still have a bonus action, 
because for the audience in D and D five e, you've got you've got your, your action, your move, and your bonus action. Let's go ahead and drop a bardic inspiration die on our dear Wendigo next to us. First is oh. well aware of, of Warren as as previously established, and they know that they're a deed seeker, so to speak. <laughs> Excellent. So. After, after a brief insult towards the bug, Earth tur uh, turns towards the Windigo and uh, says, Oi, you big bony lug, you got a couple of things to prove yourself against. Get to it. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> All right, Warren, in his excitement, is going to pull out his big-ass Warhammer, and he's going to swing it. Uh, and his shield, by the way. He's going to have his shield up. Um... Yeah, we'll just we'll just do that. Nice, easy slap, and we'll go ahead and use that inspiration die. Mm -hmm. Ooh, yeah, I might actually need it there. Uh, <laughs> go ahead. I want to hit stuff. Oh, plus five. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, so that does hit. Uh, roll up the damage. Bam. Oh, excellent! Jeez. Oh, wow. that was a ten. Okay, <laughs> just <That's> bam. <laughs> Get back uh, in the hole. Okay. So you, uh, what do you do? <laughs> All right. So you know, Warren whips out his hammer. And he's just like, in the name of, well, I don't have a god yet, but whoever's watching, this is in your name. And he just excitedly just right in the right on top of the just bonks him right in the noggin, <laughs> slams him right down. I don't know if he's like over the hole or not, but he just brings the full force of his hammer right down on top of him. Fantastic. On that you bring that hammer down, and it makes a resounding crack as metal meets <laughs> chitin. Uh, the creature screeches in agony <laughs> as it uh, recoils from the damage that you've dealt it, but is does not go down, not yet. And though it had the uh, full intent of crawling towards perhaps some other targets, it turns <laughs> to face its attacker. It's like, excuse me? You want me? <laughs> man is just standing across the room with both middle fingers extended. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it is now the turn of the first creature. It turns towards Warren, its assailant. Each creature in that line needs to make a dexterity saving throw. Oh, baby. Uh, so, does that include that Ifany? Includes, <laughs> yes, uh, that will include Ifany. It will be uh -oh. Warren, Adre, and Ifany. We'll need to make a dexterity saving throws. Oh boy! I will roll <laughs> for Ifany. <laughs> oh no! Oh. Ifany is absolutely fine. Um, Here comes Andres. Okay. They oh, wow. are. Wow. <laughs> oh, okay. old man. Mine rolled, but it didn't like the dice didn't show up. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fine. So the creature Oosh. rears up and begins to hork up a, uh, a nope, line nope. of acid that splashes across the table's melting wood. Uh, you all succeeded on your saves, so you will take half as much damage. Oh. Uh, so this is acid damage. Let's see what we roll up. Uh, 11. Oh, 11 would be normal, so it's going to be 5 rounding down for Ooh. both Warren, Adre, and also Ifany. It's still a quarter <laughs> of my health. Jesus! Yeah. Yeah. Not enough. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. Remember, Fucking... H, remember, HP may not be yourself actually getting wounded. It could be getting tired, having to spend a lot of effort on dodging, that sort of thing. That sort of thing. <laughs> so. <laughs> the, Is Ifany still uh, alive? Ifany is still alive. She she is dodging out of the way, and she finds herself coated in some acid. It's coated a part of her leg, and she's quickly yeah. trying to use her apron to get it off of her, but that, <laughs> even that apron is beginning to disintegrate under the effort of the acid. Uh, so the next creature, uh, noting that Adre is going to be a, uh, a target, uh, but needs to shove past some people in order to get over there. And so it is going to move here, as this dwarf here quickly is knocked out of the way. Um, <laughs> Bam. And is happy happy to, to hide under one of the tables. Uh, by the way, that door. Uh, but then it's going to get that to body here, lied to me. <laughs> get her past Urist and try to go for Adre. Now, Urist, this will give you an attack of opportunity. Uh, sadly, it won't. It never left my threatened area. 
That's true. It didn't. Wow, large creatures are awesome. Hey, large creatures. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So it uh, skitters towards uh, Adre and is going to attempt oh, no. to nom nom nom. Uh, emergency dodge out. procedures. Oh, no. <laughs> Does a 14 hit? Uh, unfortunately, yes. Oh, okay. No. Wizard, am I right? Wizard. <laughs> Thank God I healed you early. Yep. Yeah. It's going to do oh. six points of biting damage. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> At least it's not acid. Damage. And five points of acid damage. Oh my god. Damn. Did somebody just say, at least it's not acid? <laughs> <laughs> Someone fucking jinxed it. Yeah, really. Okay, as this creature bites into you, Adre, uh, trying to uh, tug you back, it seems, towards the, um, the hole that it has created, grabbing onto your arm and refusing to let go. So Quinn, arguably upset at his lunch being ruined <laughs> just like the fucking figures <laughs> of course geez forth from the ground but he he will help do something about this so he Good. runs over here to the and he sees that adre has been caught in its jaws he doesn't know this wizard but but you know he, he's not just gonna let someone get dragged down into some deep dark terrifying hole Yes, indeed. Uh, so Quinn reaches to his side and pulls out a battle axe mm -hmm. as he attempts to swing for the creature to do something. I mean, would do some would damage. Quinn have... <laughs> hmm. Would Quinn have advantage on that? Because Audrey's on the opposite side. Yes. A. You are flanking. Well, then, so it'll be then 13, the 13 plus 5. Is technically, yeah, it's technically 13 18. plus 5. Okay, so 18. go ahead and roll your damage for your battle axe. Oh, That's very fine. nice. 9. Excellent. 9 slashing damage. Mm -hmm. So you pull out your battle axe and you cleave down on this thing, and your battle axe finds purchase in its uh, chitin, which seems hard at first thanks to you know warren's resounding crack on the first one <laughs> well, you find that your battle axe seems very well equipped to cleaving into this strange insectoid creature as suddenly its greenish blood begins spattering ag uh, across the ground beneath you um at that a new sound oh God. rises from the depths below and smaller creatures begin skittering okay. across the wood uh oh. Creeping up. And I thought he wanted to show us those babies. <laughs> reveal their wings, and the, the beating of their wings creates a drone that fills the interior space of the cavern. It's the uh, babies. The cavern. <laughs> yes. Uh, they are not going to get in action just now because they used a, effectively a, a, a dash to get to this point. Okay, Ooh, that's, really a, really that's a 24 right there. Yes, 24 <laughs> absolutely hits. Go ahead and roll okay. that damage. So now, click play. Oh, well. Is Nine. That correct? Thanks to my uh, symbiotic entity, they also take an additional 1d6 necrotic damage. Ooh, yep, yep. okay, roll that up. So I get to roll an additional d6. And he takes six additional oh, necrotic damage. Okay. <laughs> uh, so... Uh, I'm gonna. I'm only really gonna do this this once because I know it's technically another show's thing. <laughs> but how do you want to do this? Hey. Uh, they, they, don't, they don't have claim to that. A lot of tables do that. That's yeah. true. That's true. But go ahead, Clume. Explain right. how you uh, you dispatch this foe. So, uh, when Kum, you know, when she's like, "All right, I guess we're doing this, huh?" and she bonks the staff on uh, her head. She jumps off the first table and uses the momentum to, like, you know, gain a speed boost to be able to quickly jump up on the second table and just jumps up off of it and with the staff slams on his head, cracks open the skull as just a bunch of green blood splatters all over the place. And splat it does, maybe a rapid puddle of goo and viscera from this creature as it finally relinquishes Adre's arm <laughs> and slowly twitches into its yeah. final death state. Bloom One then, creature destroyed. Boom then turns to Quinn and, uh, and she's like, did you see that? I, I finally, I finally did it. It worked. <laughs> <laughs> Quinn 
and just gives her a little thumbs up. <laughs> so with my last yeah, 10 fine. feet of movement, I am going to walk right over the corpse and go right next to Warren. Okay. And as she kind of like rushes over, Loom, uh like gives a look towards Warren. And like, <laughs> even though obviously Warren didn't affect Clum with his presence, She's still fucking terrified of someone made of nothing but bones. <laughs> and she just stares at him and looks at the creature and like, all right, those things are more scarier than you. So I'm just going to stand right here if you don't mind. And that's going to end my turn. So, but of course, tiny mushroom. I'm so proud of her. <laughs> they grow up so fast. All right. Uh... Just visually, how is the, uh, the, the chitinous one between Urist and <laughs> Jen Quinal looking? Bloody and twitching. Look at spite. Well, in that case, one arm hanging half dead at his side, Andre's <laughs> going to reach up into the air with one open hand and violently close it, and a burst of spores will form above the creature in the shape of a deathcap mushroom. Ooh. And twitch, and a resounding bell rings out. <laughs> oh, <laughs> dang! Okay, let's go. Warren, upon hearing the bell from that death toll, was like, "Oh, it's already that late. Oh, I have to. Oh, that's not good. I have to. Uh, I have to get rested for tomorrow. Oh, so so many temples to hit." <laughs> Jesus yeah. Christ. Okay, so how do you splat this thing? <laughs> Just right through the floor. The floor already seems hey, to be a little uh, <laughs> unstable. Your, your hammer comes down. It's 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 not like it necessarily hits the thing, because hitting it would imply it kind of like bounces off your hammer. No, what happens is your hammer catches this thing. Power dunk. This, this buzzing creature. You slam it into the ground, and when you bring your hammer up, there's just a hole. The creature is gone. <laughs> just a hole in the ground. Oh, yeah, here's a little... I didn't know I could, I didn't know I could cast destruction. <laughs> um, and with that, the sounds of the droning and clattering insects come to rest, and no further sound is heard. <laughs> or it's like, see, that's Except what I was expecting to hear. <laughs> Mine yes, there's, a, uh, there's an overall kind of quiet that fills the room as everyone kind of leans a little <laughs> bit in the direction of the holes to see if anything else is, is coming kind of say up. Hello. Uh, uh -huh, the two uh -huh. assailed uh, bar goers kind of, uh, you know, check around and, and finally pull their hands away from their head and see that everything is, is taken care of. The dwarf that was hiding under the table kind of uh, peeks over and, and takes a very brave look down into the, the hole below. Oh, I'll go down and check. I'm good. I'm sure it's safe now. Let me just, uh, just stick my head down there and see, see if it's safe. It'll be fine. <laughs> Don't be sticking your head down there unless you want to lose it. Uh, uh, you're a big lad. Go, uh, go over to one of those tables. And you, with the ears, grab it. Uh, uh, flip it over. Put it over one of the holes. Then, then go for another table. You, pointing to the, uh, pointing to the other dwarf. Get the smaller tables. Start flipping them. Put them over the smaller holes. We block. Uh, we block it off first. Warren's late. <laughs> Wouldn't they just eat through the tables? If they do, it gives us another <laughs> second or three. <laughs> would it be a waste of a perfectly good table? I would like to. I would, what? I, what would I sit on then? Uh, Audrey is dropping into the nearest chair, mm -hmm. finishing his drink. Yeah. <laughs> one heavy drink, heavy pull, uh -huh. and then inspecting the giant, the corpse of the large creature in front of him. Very good. Is there anything that you wish to to do about or with that corpse? Uh, just figure out what the hell it is. Okay, go ahead and make a nature check. Not the okay. tails. <laughs> um. So looking at this, it's. It, you, your first instinct might be, oh, maybe this is one of those, you know, a dire creature that would normally be outside the walls. But then uh, upon further, you know, uh, reflection, you come to the conclusion that this is very likely a type of, uh, of monstrosity that actually, of its current size, is the size that it should be. Uh, and it's a creature called an Ankeg. And all you really can, can draw out from that role is that uh, uh, they live underground and they feast on all manner of detritus that they can find. Oh, it no. is about that time that, uh, that there's a, a bit of a, a commotion outside, 
and three of the local guard step in. Swords already drawn. Um, and one of them, with slightly shinier armor than the rest, you know, demands, where's where's the problem? Where are the creatures? Warren's like, like oh, ah. you've done your job for <laughs> you already. Yeah, er, erst, quick as, a, quick as a whip. Five minutes ago, and in the hole. The <laughs> guards kind of look around and take take note of the situation, and they can see that it's all under control. Nobody's panicking. They sheathe their swords, and one of them uh, calls back and uh, for uh, another participant, who then steps slowly into the tavern. And this is a man that uh, you all would have seen before. Uh, you know that this man is a uh, human, pale skin, gray hair, keeps himself uh, well kept. And he is uh, the landlord of the square that this tavern is a part of. Damn taxes. Yeah, well, so <laughs> landlord is, is kind of a, a weird term in this, in this space where he doesn't necessarily oh. own the land, he more manages it. Um, so less to do with taxes, more to do with just making sure everything gets along, everyone gets along, and that any sort of infrastructure is taken care of. Um, so, the tavern getting a few new holes in it absolutely falls in his purview. Um, so this is a man, elderly man, you know him as Adrian Pexius. Okay? Uh, he steps in after the guard, give the all clear, and he takes, you know, stock of the situation. Uh, he steps forward, and he says, <clears throat> Who do I have to thank for this dispatch of these pests? <laughs> That uh, that would be, Erst cuts on in, uh, about in the five of us. Myself, the uh, the big uh, the big bony one, the uh, the big uh, the the mushroom headed one, one, the other mushroom headed one, and the one with the ears. <laughs> <laughs> the mushrooms. I see. Uh, and he kind of takes stock of of the room, and there's a couple of the other tavern patrons that are kind of nodding, you know, enthusiastically, and and kind of gesturing at at you five. And it's, ah, wonderful. To think, in my own land, creatures as this, middle of the day, during the lunch rush, no less, come out of the ground and go and try to steal their own meal. Unacceptable, but you all have my deep gratitude for taking care of the issue post haste. Anybody injured, anybody in need of assistance, Erst looks over to Ardre, not Andre too subtly. Half raises one arm. And just sort of ah, flops it around. Yes. <laughs> you would see to him. He gestures to one of the, the guard and immediately comes over and helps with some medical attention. Uh, Warren is confused right now because he heard the he heard the word lunch and was like, but I, I could have sworn I heard the the midnight bell toll. I don't he's like pulls his, his clawed hands up. He's like counting on one of his, his little claws. Like, wait a minute, what, what time is it? <laughs> you still see someone streaming wizard. through the windows. Yes, uh, but you heal another three. I I misclicked the the one, but you heal three hit points, uh, Adri, off of that. Um, as as the guard kind of administers some medical attention to you, wraps up your your arm and and applies a healing salve. Yeah. Uh, is there a name that you call yourselves? Gesturing to the lot of you. <laughs> well, my name is Morse. <laughs> Erst raises an eyebrow before raising the other eyebrow and sort of catching on to uh, what's being suggested. And uh, well, we uh. <clears throat> we we haven't talked about that yet, I'm afraid. And Warren <laughs> says... <It's> confused. <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> my name is Warren. <laughs> Not picking up on the fact that he was asking for a party name. <laughs> yes! Uh <-huh. laughs> and at that, Adrian kind of furrows his brows <laughs> and looks around between the two of you and he says, ah, I assumed you were part of some mercenary group. Perhaps I was mistaken. Or it's like, oh. <laughs> oh, that's what you meant. She just shakes her head and crosses her arms over the big bushy beard. Not in as yet. Not in as far as I know. Oh. <laughs> Go ahead, Warren. Sorry, I should probably turn those off. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
How about uh, Kloom and Quinn? What are you guys doing while this is all happening in front of you? Kloom is just hiding behind Quinn's leg, shaking. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Quinn has... He, he, he is perhaps purposefully standing a little between Kloom and everyone else. Um, okay. He's, he's probably been, like, side-eyeing Lauren this whole time, like, thinking to himself, oh, well, he fought well, but I still don't trust him. Just mm -hmm. ever since that one first encounter, he he just hasn't forgiven one <laughs> for it quite yet. Um, yeah. <laughs> and then as soon as uh, what was this guy's name? The, Adrian. The Adrian. As soon as Adrian like suggests they're all the party. He makes like a face to himself, like ugh. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> party. If Warren's been like avoiding eye contact with Quinn the whole time. <laughs> Like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't mean to. He, just, he doesn't know what to do. It's like being awkward over there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, well Quinn's just not sure. <laughs> let me put it to you simply then, uh, my fellow would Americans. be mercenaries, shall be mercenaries. I'm not sure what to call you, but <laughs> Warren here, at the very least, and you are, and. and points to each of you in turn, and you introduce yourselves, giving your names. Um, and the Adrian nods along and, and says, well, let me put it to you simply. Most of the work that we have available, the hands that we have available are working on repairing the damage done to the wall last week. But with this new issue, before more of these creatures come from whatever tunnel is below, I would offer you a deal. I'm already prepared to give you a generous reward for your effort in stopping these beasts before they could do any serious or permanent harm to any of our lovely patrons. But if you would pursue their burrow and see where they came from, I'm willing to triple that reward. <laughs> Warren is, so he like, he doesn't like, he just, the, the, the reward is just a be like, goes over and he's like, this finally! A burrow of monsters! Ah, oh, yes, and it's now time for me to shine and prove my worth to the deities. I will be blessed before I even know it. Oh, you have you have a deal. He doesn't even, like... <laughs> oh, I, I, I would well. imagine Warren gasping and going, I could triple my tithe. <laughs> I could triple my tithe. Yeah, exactly. Quadruplet, and I'll help you clean the bar too with some <laughs> magic. Oh, oh so. Oh, wow. Quadruple okay, ties. <laughs> quirks his brow at that and is surprised by the, the sudden offer to not only, uh, you know, deal with these pests, but also to, you know, clean up the bar as well. And he he's kind of leans forward and he says, You mean you could fix the holes in the foundation as well? Oh no, the holes are still going to be your problem, I'm afraid. <laughs> However, uh, she uh, she she turns towards the nearest bug, uh, th thinks for a second, mutters to uh, mutters to herself, the answer, uh, the ancestors, the answers, and uh, and the trio, and and points at it, and uh, the ne the nearest swatch of bug blood vanishes. Oh, I see. If you could handle the corpses, including any that you find down where Dang, the trace came from. Dang. Then fine, I will quadruple the reward. It would be 50 gold for each of you. Now you're looking at 200 upon your return and report. Oh. Of course, you will not be going alone. I shall send one of the keepers and a skeletal guard along with you. So much teething, man. <laughs> <laughs> quite, uh, quite a generous offer. What would you think on an advance for a, for a bit of weaponry to go in with? And a... Uh, very well, very well. I can give you the 50 gold that I was planned right from the get-go. And Erst, uh, Erst will arrive at her, uh, at her father's uh, at her father's uh, shop, I suppose would be a good way to put it, though let's not undersell the, the dwarven endeavor that this is. Mm -hmm. she, comes, uh, she comes forth and she, uh, she explains in the clipped dwarven manner, in proper dwarven, Father, my rapier and my rapier wit are both needed, but I am in need of more armor and weaponry. <laughs> Daughter! <laughs> I love it. What is it you need the armor for? <laughs> Jesus Christ. She, she 
gestures up and down at the at the at the hardened furs she's currently wearing. Protection. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> there is never a thing between these four walls that would threaten my daughter, who's made out of the tougher stuff than the walls are. <laughs> She uh, she, nod, uh, she nods, <laughs> sort of sort of turning the compliment over in her head a couple of times before explain before explaining, not within the walls, but there's a hole under the bar. We're going down to clean it out. Bunch of bugs, spit acid. Mm. Acid bugs. Acid bugs. I mm. fought acid bugs. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't. But yeah, that's that's all too fitting. <laughs> Right, armor for acid bugs. Um, so a man, a young man, uh, with uh, a blue tunic and hat, um, is flanked by two skeletons, unadorned but wielding uh, small maces. The uh, skeletons amble there by close by this man's side, uh, and Adrian comes up to introduce him to your party. Uh, and he says, this is Clifton Ashglade, one of the keepers of the town. He'll be joining you to make sure that everything is dealt with appropriately. Uh, use the skeletons as you see fit, I suppose. So right there, lad. Do you have any experience being in combat? You, can you take a hit or two? Oh. Uh, not as such, no. Back of the party it is. <laughs> Back of the party it is. Of course. And he nods <laughs> along eagerly. The tunnels are rather straight. They wind in very direct ways. Wherever there's a turn, it's usually a 45 or a 90 degree <laughs> turn. <laughs> oh, jeez, witty. Very mechanical almost, but steadily slipping downwards. They're large enough for each of you to stand at your full height and about two people uh, across, shoulder to shoulder. It's dark, it's humid, uh, and it stinks of bug shit. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, eventually, however, the rock becomes harder, more tightly packed, older as well, lichen and uh, moss growing across uh, a, a variety of the surfaces, making it a little bit slippery and damp, but otherwise making it a little bit easier to travel across. The ceiling gets higher and the walls get a little bit wider and it becomes clear that this area um, has already seen some use of some sort. It's been well-traveled, perhaps by these bugs or perhaps by another creature. Um, right, so everyone knows the traditional strong. party marching orders, yeah? No. Not <laughs> like that. It, 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 <laughs> I stole allow, them allow, allow, them. Me to, yeah. allow me to explain mm -hmm. by way of a song. Oh, no. Oh, no. oh boy. Oh, boy. And boy. No. done. Have no worry. It's a classic. <laughs> it goes... <laughs> Just dropped to zero. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you know you never split the party? <laughs> a, wizard, a, a wizard in the back, keep the fighter hale and hardy. Cleric in the middle, where he can shed some light, and you never let that damn thief out of sight. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Applause, applause. Pachi, pachi. <laughs> yes. Uh, well done, Alex. <laughs> Stepping forward into the cave, you have to wade through some ankle-deep puddles. <laughs> exactly, really Epiphany. Anything, uh, particularly uh, dangerous or threatening. Uh, but it's it becomes very apparent that you know, aside from Staria, or I'm sorry, uh, I'm sorry, aside from Quinn and Clume, the rest of the party is making quite a bit of sound. Uh, the sound of of chainmail and armor clanking together echoes off of the cave walls and deeper into the area ahead. Moving forward, uh, those of you with lanterns and dark vision begin to pick out uh, some new features of this cavern. Uh, if my reveal areas would work. <laughs> Come on now. 
<laughs> Come on now. There we go. Okay. Uh, you see what looks like the remains of a camp ahead. <laughs> oh, we would leave All this right. stuff out in the middle of the road. <laughs> All right. Quick, uh, quick search. Make sure there's nothing inside the tent. Give a poke about for valuables, and we move on. Okay. Uh, so looking closely, you can see that this um, this chest has a large padlock um, that is very, very heavily rusted to the point that uh, the rust has kind of bloomed across the keyhole, causing it to become misshapen. Um, the part of the padlock that actually goes into the lock looks, like, looks almost like it's fused with rust uh, that connects everything together. If there was any trap, you look around it, you look, you know, above and below it. If there was a trap, it's disintegrated a long time ago. <laughs> You'll look over to Klum and say, should we try to open it? <laughs> it's so moldy, Rusty. You just pick the entire lid up off the, <laughs> the chest. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Klum kind what would of... be funny is, like, the, the hinges are rusted and broken out, so it doesn't open the normal way. It opens the <laughs> backwards. <way>. <laughs> <laughs> funny. Yeah. Klum kind of, like, pokes the chest with her uh, wind staff. Okay. And kind of just like stares at it intently. Okay, the chest but, is poked. <laughs> but then like turns her head and looks ahead and looks back at Quinn and she's like, I know you're going to break it anyways, so just do it. Just do it, jeez. <laughs> And at this at this point, Klum's gonna kind of like uh, like nudge her with her wooden staff. But at that time, she's gonna cast guidance on Quinn. Okay. Hey. Um. So, all right. So, how do you tackle this thing? Um. Hmm. So, great question. Um. I think Quinn will take his battle axe once more from his side and attempt to basically just break the lock off. Okay. Swing of his uh, axe. Make a attack with your axe. Oh, and you do With get the my, guy. my luck, I'm gonna like freaking miss. Oh, twenty one. Oh, yeah, that 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 hits a stationary object. Yes. <laughs> yep. uh, go ahead and roll the damage. Eight. Very good. Okay, so you uh, strike the padlock. At which point, uh, you hear an awful hiss. And the chest immediately opens. Oh, <laughs> it's a mimic. And attempts to grab you with its long, sticky tongue. Okay, oh, let's see no. if I can. I'm so glad I'm on the other side of the cave. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so fascinated in the bones. Adre, while what? this is happening, and before we roll initiative, uh-oh. Uh, you are drawn over by the bones. <laughs> There's a lot of them. It's a lot of bones. Yeah. A, a Looking over this, go ahead and make a, a perception or investigation check, whichever you prefer. Who, me? Yes, Adri. Okay, sorry. No problem. You have to, you ha you, after all, you get a protect, per perception check before the bone golem jumps you. <laughs> <laughs> Which one did you say to roll? Uh, perception or investigation, whichever you prefer. Uh, let's go investigation. Okay. Almost. So right. looking over these bones, probably the first thing that you notice is that there's several skulls, which mm. means that there's more than one corpse here. Um, mm. And in fact, there could be more because you see fragments of, of other bones that many of them have kind of molded and, and degraded over, over time and under the, the effects of the water. Um, and as you start to sift through them, you know, you're maybe a little bit in your brain is going, well, wait a minute, the, the campsite looks only big enough for maybe one, maybe two people. But there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight <laughs> here, uh, at least, <laughs> judging by the skulls alone. Um, something's not adding up. Guys, I think something's wrong here. Be careful. <laughs> <laughs> and as you say that, a big, wet, warm, warm glob, glob. <laughs> of saliva <laughs> splatters across the back of your neck and begins to oh, drip God. down your back. Oh, I feel it. Oh, oh. 
<laughs> slowly sluicing through your clothes and immediately applying this damp stickiness. It doesn't burn, it doesn't hurt. But it draws your eyes upwards. Oh no. And adhered to the ceiling are a pair of creatures. <laughs> That's it, burn everything in this cave. <laughs> that are looking down at you very oh. hungrily. Wow, I'd rather oh, be on God. this side right now. <laughs> With beady eyes and many gnashing teeth and little Everything. feelers that whip out from, from its mouth. <laughs> it's the God, Gloom's not going to be the first one killed. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about this, Riley. <laughs> and at that, I will have you all roll initiative for the second time tonight. Uh, will, yeah. That's going to hit. Yeah. That's going to hit, and so it's going to do... 16 damage to Adre. Oh no. How much health do so you have, Adre, buddy? Adre, you are at negative two. At negative two. It is not above your, your hit points or anything like that, but when it comes to be your turn, uh, you will have to make a death saving throw. Kroom is then going to. Wait, uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 30, right here. Mm -hmm. And cast. Healing word on Audrey. Okay. Good timing. That's yes, <laughs> very good. I have a good time to kill it. <laughs> the wizard stirring back to life. His hands glow uh, a blue frost and grabs the creature with them. Oh, okay. Very good. Do it to it. Oh, there you go. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> I don't think a D4 oh, could help with that. Uh, yeah, I, I don't. I don't think so. Uh, you you reach out your your spell ready, and you and just before yeah. your hands touch the creature, the spell ends accidentally, and so you're just there holding this creature, and it blushes. <laughs> what? How are you doing? I'm kidding. Uh, but it, it, it just kind of it just doesn't know what to do. It kind of recoils a little bit. It doesn't know like, what, uh, what the heck you're trying to do. Uh, it senses an attack, but it it, it just doesn't land. Um, that's right. Man, that's right. God, the dice. So as soon as combat ends, Kloom rushes right over to Quinn, and she's like, "Oh my God, are you okay? Are you okay?" <laughs> or it's like. Um, Sir Andre, <laughs> would you like some healing? I, I could try that again. Uh, <laughs> uh, the love first, of God, man, I've already died once today. <laughs> first, raise, first raises a hand. This, this might be a good uh, a good time to stop for a moment, have a uh, have a bite away from the corpses, listen to a bit of music, and uh, regain our strength. <laughs> Translation: Let's let's just drop a hit die on this and a short, short rest. Short rest. <laughs> <laughs> So you take a rest, take a breather. Uh, Clifton offers you uh, water and, and rations that he's brought with him, and you guys have yourself a small, uh, small snack uh, to prepare for the path ahead. Um, thankfully, the path is not very long. Okay. Winding through this wider part of the cave, you find that it leads out into open air. It goes up along a kind of uh, gentle slope. Gets a bit a bit hard on your thighs and calves as, as gentle slope hiking does. Um, but eventually, you find that this cave lets out outside of the great walls of Arcala. Oh no. That uh -oh. is a problem with a and capital P. I will show you exactly where they end up with a little Clume token. Not <laughs> uh, I'm gonna use Clume. It lets out right up here, amidst the ancient remains of a monster that was felled by the city hundreds of years ago. Oh. Oh boy. <laughs> and that, ladies and gentlemen, is where we are going to pause. Oh, 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 oh man, cliffhanger. <laughs> 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 <laughs>